Hi, and welcome again. I've had some firm complaints in the comments section about overfitting and that our trading or algorithmic trading models are way overfitted and they will not work well on future trading data. But what if we are not really overfitting our models? Actually, what if we are not even trying to fit any of the models at all? And maybe even when we overfit, sometimes on purpose, it might be a profitable approach and there is somehow a clever way to do this. The thing about algorithmic trading is just like any artificial intelligence, machine learning working pipeline, Sometimes, and for some types of data, we might not have much of a choice with overfitting. It's kind of a curse and we have to deal with it. Now, the first point I would like to clarify is that none of the indicators we have used so far in our strategies is being fitted, optimized or modified in any way. Notice that every single time we optimized a trading strategy, we only included the take profit and stop loss distances in the optimization process, no matter what the trading indicator was. This is why we have been using this heat map where on the X axis, we have the take profit stop loss ratio and on the Y axis, we have the stop loss coefficient. Everything else, the moving averages, the Bollinger Bands, the VWAP, the MACD, RSI, and any indicator we have used remains the same during the whole backtesting and optimization process. So there is no way any of these indicators is included in the so-called overfitting process. I would actually say these might be even underfitted since we never took care of these parameters the length of the RSI or the length of the moving averages and so on. None of these parameters were optimized in the optimization process. We fixed these at the beginning of the strategy. We just analyzed the situation. We said, let's say we need an EMA of 20 and another EMA of 50 or 60 of length. And then these parameters remained constant and the same fixed during the whole optimization process. So no, the indicators were never overfitted. And just to make things even clearer, in summary, in all our backtests for all the strategies so far, we never tuned parameters related to the indicators. All what we were overfitting was related to the trade management part, which comes after the trade is opened. And this is an important point to underline. It's also somehow related to the previous video around accounting for commissions in backtesting. When we look at a heat map that shows different setups of stop loss distances, and take profit stop loss ratios, we can immediately see that the indicator we are using has a potential. If most of the returns are positive, this means that no matter what the stop loss and take profit configuration are, we will most probably have an advantage over the market because all the returns are showing positive values. On the opposite side, if we have mostly negative returns shown on the heat map, this indicates that the indicator is not suitable for trading. So no matter which trading management we include in the strategy, it all depends, first of all, on the indicator. In a very simple way, algorithmic strategies are usually crafted out of two major parts, the detection and entry signal, so the indicator related part, and the trade management part, where we choose the closing pattern of the trade. When do we close the trade that we already opened? So if an indicator is set and fixed at the beginning of our backtesting series without any modification, and we still manage to get good results on most of the heat map backtested cases and for different stop loss and take profit conditions, this means that the indicator has an excellent potential. Another point we might want to consider is the variance. If we look at all these tests, we can see that the transition between the different values of returns is not very sharp. So there's a smooth transition between one set of parameters and another close set of parameters. So the variance is relatively small. Obviously, we can compute the variance of a model and set a threshold limit to decide if we have an overfitting case. But for these examples, it's not really needed. The differences between neighboring returns is smooth enough, showing relatively low variance. And so there is no overfitting. To make things a bit clearer and refresh our memory, take a look at these two examples. This is a low variance fitting and it's expected that this generalizes better over wider set of data. While the second, the bottom example, is a high variance fit, which is also called overfitting. And as you can see, it passes almost through all the training points, but it will fail to describe any new point on the chart because it's so twisted in a way to fit only the training points. And this is the case we usually want to avoid in trading and in any machine learning problem. 
In trading, we want a model to fit on training data, but we also want this model to be applicable for any new data on the market because we basically intend to apply the model on future data. So back to our heat map, we can identify this smooth low variance behavior looking at the returns values. While in this test, we can see sharp changes between neighboring return values. For example, this 21% is surrounded by minus 18, minus 11, and so on. We sharply jump from plus 21% to minus 18 or minus 12, as you can see, just by changing any of the take profit stop loss ratio or the uh, stop loss uh, coefficient for the stop loss distances. So you get the point. We have those sharp jumps in between the return values. Also, this 27% is surrounded by negative values as well. So we can see those spikes in values, which also means that if we change the stop loss or take profit distance by a tiny bit, the strategy would turn from a winning to a losing system. Even worse, if we don't change anything and the market changes slightly, the same would happen. Our system would turn from a winning system or supposedly to be a winning system to a very much losing system. So this usually happens when we have a bad trading indicator where we try to cover it up by an overfitted trade management style. And this is why I don't consider this indicator as an overfitting case, simply because of the continuity of the return results. And you can verify these by yourself. I always share the codes. I always share the Jupyter notebooks where we obtain these and you can verify this continuity of, uh, of the values of the return values from the different back tests. Now, on another point, a bit of overfitting might not be as bad as you think. In our case, let me show you how. Imagine we are using an indicator where these are the results and they look good. So we choose the safest set of parameters and it should be somewhere around this area. For example, we have a cluster of positive returns and all around it. In case the market shifts, we still have positive returns. So now we have a take profit and stop loss distances that we can trade with for let's say a week or so. We're not going to carry these parameters forever. It's just valid for a week. Now, after a while, market conditions will change. And so this cluster of maximum profit is expected to shift to a different area of take profit and stop loss distances. So this is why we can rerun our pipeline of parameters or fitting the parameters and identify a new set of take profit and stop loss distances to trade with, providing a safe area of uh, positive returns. It's not an extreme overfitting case, but since the parameters do not generalize over a long period of trading and we need to refit every week, we are somehow in the overfitting behavior and uh, the overfitting uh, mindset, let's say. But exceptionally for this case, it's a good kind of overfitting. But there's only one way to find out. We need to try it, we need to deploy it live, and then time will tell. And this was it for this video. I hope it brought some clarifications about the fitting process and especially when we forward test our strategies and we still find the same pattern of positive returns. This can only confirm that the indicator we are using is good for a trading strategy and we're not overfitting the indicators. If you are still watching, thank you for staying that long. Please support the channel, pressing the like button, and if you have any ideas, don't forget to leave them in the comment section. If it's your first time on this channel, for any strategy and indicators that we backtest, I usually provide the entire Python code for download in the description of the videos. Check the other videos out and let me know what you think. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.